Welcome to the Bank Marketing Show, the podcast that engages and informs you for success in today's marketplace. It's the show that will make you a better marketer with trends, tactics, and inspiration from experts and industry leaders. If you're wanting to impact your personal success and position your bank as the best choice in your market, you're in the right place. Now let's dive into today's show with your hosts, Chris and Dan. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another great episode of Bank Marketing Show. We're glad to have you with us and uh, hope you're kind of fastening your, your seatbelt because those of us in the industry um, find it really important to talk about customer experience, but that means so many different things. And so we are really excited about our guest here today to kind of dive into that topic area and uh Joanne, Dan, and I are, are, are so glad to, to have you. And I'll, Dan, I'll pass it off to you. Hope you're doing well today. Yeah, likewise. And welcome, welcome, Joanne, to the show. It's good to have you here. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm excited to get into the topic. So I'll, let me give a quick intro. Um, so uh, Joanne, Mar- I, I'm, I'm, I should have confirmed this before we hit record, but here's a, a moment of vulnerability here. Marcili. Marcili, Mar- correct. Marcili, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Joanne Marsili, uh coming us uh, coming to us today. Um, she is the EVP, Chief Marketing and Digital Experience Officer at Fidelity Bank um, in Lemonster, Massachusetts. That we did confirm. It's it looks like Leo Minster for all of you that are not in the Northeast, but um, mm-hmm. we're having an interesting conversation around pronunciations. Lemonster, Massachusetts, about an hour west of Boston. Um, so Fidelity's a one and a half billion ish, thirteen branch bank. Is that right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, just give everybody a sense of the size. So, uh, and Joanne, you, you know, you've really focused on this area of like aligning marketing with sales, right? You've done a lot with digital transformation. I know at, at Fidelity, you're really focused on, you know, uh, connecting the, the, you know, in branch, the physical experience with the digital, um, right? Helping, helping Fidelity digitally transform, you know, a, a really be on a digital journey. Cause I think, Transformation like implies there's an end. <laughs> um, there's, no there's not. There's more just you know um, making sure the bank's prepared for the future. You also just just wrapped up another year of teaching at the ABA uh, Bank Marketing School. Correct. Yes, return on investment. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and you know you're you're relatively new to your role at uh, at at Fidelity, um, but. You you had a long tenure at your previous bank, and um, I know your previous bank was awarded a, a ton of best uh, best community bank type of awards, Forbes a couple of times, top 50 banks in uh, social media um, by the ICBA. Glad to get to, get to get to meet you. excited to see where you uh, where you take your bank down the line. So me too. <laughs> <laughs> well so, uh, so again welcome and and why don't we start there? like tell us give us a little more color around you know around your career path how do, how you got to your role today like what do you see the how did you find yourself focused on marketing and, and customer experience? So I am a marketer by trade. So I did not come up in the banking industry as you know, some career paths kind of go teller to branch manager to to marketer. Um, I actually came in the bank um, from uh, marketing. In fact, when I when I received my first job offer at a bank, my husband said to me, um, do they know that you've never balanced a checkbook? <laughs> like that's not the skill set they wanted. Um, so, um, but at the so I've been at two Fidelity banks. So it, I might say blue and green. Those are the, those are how I differentiate between the two banks that um, my career has led me to. But um, at the first Fidelity bank, I was able to really do a lot, learned a lot, had some really smart bankers who who taught me a lot of stuff about building a bank, you know, how revenue is created and really kind of um, that path led me to do a lot of things. I set up a business services. Um, I worked through the digital transformation. I took over the the marketing and, and uh, review of payments, which was, you know, in today's world is, is really significant. Um, I, uh, for a while, ran retail. Um, the call center reported to me. So I had a lot of opportunities to work in a lot of different areas that gave me some really great foundational experience. 
And then when the offer came from the new Fidelity Bank, they were really looking for someone to help them digitally transform the organization. And in that digital transformation, um, we talk a lot about the fact that you can't just do digital. You've got in a, in a community bank setting, you have to both do digital and physical. And that client experience and that digital experience has to come together to create a brand um, that we would be proud to, to continue to sell. And so um, in my role now, I have um, operations, community banking, which includes the call center, marketing, and a product innovation group that all kind of reports up to me. So I have this really nice span of control where I can I can do a lot and and kind of move levers as I need to. So hmm. that's the short story. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of a lot of great stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really exciting. And a lot of spinning plates at one time, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm good at that. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> you know, there, there's a bit of marketing and a bit of customer experience. So how do you think about the difference between those? You know, how do you define customer experience as opposed to marketing? Right. There's a, there's overlap, but like, you know, how do you think about the difference between the two? So maybe differently than everybody else, I think customer experience is a lever that marketing can pull to create a brand brand value. So I don't see client experience as anything different than something else in the marketer's toolbox. And so I think that that's where kind of the sales and marketing alignment really become very clear, right? Because you need you need the sales team to kind of buy into the fact that these are things that we need to look at, we need to do. But it's not just about the face forward, it's also the face backward. Like you need to make sure that the ATM is working. You need to make sure your mobile app is working. You know, it, it, it's it's a continuum that goes across different units throughout the bank. And, and I think marketing is in a unique place to be able to manage through that. Well, and Joanne, I know that you and Dan uh, kind of visited a while uh, back recently about kind of our discussion here today. And one of the things that came out of that was taking your, your comments from just a moment ago and, and taking it even to another level so that customer experience and then there's customer service. And mm -hmm. those of us that work in the uh, community financial institution world understand that perhaps our greatest strength and opportunity is customer service. And that's com commonly said, and it's around relationship. But, but I would agree with what I, I think is your thinking that there's a, certainly a profound difference or, or some important difference rather between customer experience and customer service. Because one for us marketing people is really around uh, personality and message and how do I feel versus what, so, so what, what's kind of your take on the difference between customer experience and customer service? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think a lot of people use it, you know, um, as, as the same, you know, synonymously um, together, right? But I don't think that they are at all. I think service um, is is basically a, a transaction. I'm going to do what you have asked me to do. Where experience is about, I'm not only going to do what you've asked me to do, but I am going to be your advocate. I'm going to be your advisor. I'm going to be your. Um, I'm going to build a relationship with you so that I can be a really strong banker for your for whatever financial needs that you have. And so I see that as a little bit, well, very different um, because you know even when you're measuring service or satisfaction, I, I think that's just table stakes to get into the game. Well, and I think you make great points there. And, and as you say, if service is transactional, so you know maybe it's whatever, a, a loan or opening an account or or just making a transfer or whatever the case may be. So that's a transaction. But would you also say that customer experience is also, you know, also multi-platform? Because I'm probably going to run into your brand in numerous different ways in the process of a transaction. W would you would you say so? Oh, absolutely. I, so um, one of the things that we are talking about internally is that that customer experience has to go across all platforms, right? You know, the experience has to be as as good at the ATM as it would be if you called into the call center. 
um, as it would be if you walked into a branch, as it would be if you um, did a, you know, open an account online or even within mobile banking, transferring from one to the other, having intuitive, right? You need service part is about just making sure that everything's working the way it should be. But the experience is about making sure that that it's intuitive and it's it's easy and it's you delight the customer at every opportunity. Yeah, it's a, and that that easy part is is also really interesting. It's it's creating things that are frictionless, right? Because like little tiny frictions, if you have to repeat them, right? If it if it takes an extra two or three clicks to even just log into online banking, a lot of banks may think about it as well. It's, it's still pretty easy, but like if you're a customer, you might do that two or three times a day, maybe you know. And repeatedly, those couple clicks start. It's kind of a contrived example, but like mm-hmm. it, it, little tiny frictions add up over time, right? So if the bank isn't focused on that, that's not that doesn't clearly fall into marketing. It doesn't clearly fall into customer service, right? Because mm-hmm. nobody's really calling your call center to say, "I've got to do these clicks um, to log into banking." But it's it's a friction that adds up and just generally probably you know causes some frustrations with customers and makes them think it's not that easy. Uh, maybe it's yeah. not a click to log in. Maybe it's an extra step in you know uploading a mobile check for a deposit or something. But like, you know, if you're if you're not looking at that overall experience and what's what it's like to be a customer, if you're just looking at resolution times at the call center or your tagline and your marketing, you're missing, you know, you're missing that kind of overall over, overarching kind of customer experience focus. Yeah, Dan, I think so. You brought up a couple two really good points that I want to just kind of circle back on. So one is that, you know, we've all been trained by Amazon and Google to uh, on Apple really on what we should expect from, from ease of, of using technology. Right. And so anytime that a bank kind of goes beyond that, we feel kind of some angst with it. Right. It's, it's just not, you know, this, this, why, why do I have to do it this many times? This doesn't make sense to me. Why am I calling this person eight times? And why don't they know what I'm, what I wanted before? Didn't anybody take notes? You know, all of that stuff, right. Um, becomes fresh, you know, a frustration for a client. But the other thing that you said was about how no one line of business is actually looking at if you, if it's just sales and the, and they're looking at kind of the branch experience, that's one thing, right? And IT is looking at, oh, the technology is working. It works fine, right? But it's marketing from a 30,000 foot view that can kind of dig deep and say, well, no, these are brand experiences. Every time a client touches us in any way, shape or form, it's creating a brand experience. That's why we all do default to Amazon because it's so stinking easy, right? Um, I need this. I'm just going to go there. It's one click. I, it's arriving in my door tomorrow. That's that's the experience that we we are developing as you know what our expectations are. So there there's not one group in the bank that really has charge of that. So the most reasonable place is to put it in marketing. Mm-hmm. Because they're the ones thinking about it all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and, and and in marketing, you're making you know you're making you you're the first one to kind of make those brand promises to new to new customers. You're the ones that the marketing team is the one that sort of cements in the brand promise with existing customers for for cross sell or things like that. And so it makes sense. You should be very connected to how that brand promise is is delivered right. um, exactly. and executed. And you know if you've got marketing and and, and your marketing just focuses on you know social media and paid ads. And you've got a sales team that focuses on getting, you know, getting loan applications, but nobody's looking at, well, great, what happens after they open an account? What happens after they sign a loan? That's what's going. Exactly. That's what's creating the long-term customer. That's what's creating the cross-sell opportunities and the growth. Exactly. Um, yeah. 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 It, I mean, it's the whole journey. Yeah, yeah, it is the whole journey. That's right. And and uh, again, as we began part of this conversation with um, w- with our audience as as one part or another of community financial institutions, often it's it's discussion about the competition with the mega banks and you know uh, kind of the environment of competition as it exists these days. So how do you think that that customer service most importantly comes into play for for community financial institutions and and how can it best be utilized and taken advantage of? 
Yeah, and and I think um, I think we as banks, just in general within the industry, we focus too much on what other people are doing, and I think the best thing to do is to focus on you know playing your own game, hmm. um, and not looking at what the bank across the street is doing, and not looking at oh my gosh, we could never do what what the big bank down the street is doing, because I think. As a community bank, th- there's a couple things, right? We have, because we're smaller, supposedly more nimble, and we have less, you know, we don't have a thousand employees that we have to roll out this thing to. You know, we can we can move and beta test a lot of things that are maybe more difficult in a larger bank. Um, I think that with a community bank setting, you can clearly align your brand promise to the activities of your bankers a little bit easier. Hmm. So I think that the primary thing with that, Chris, is is that don't don't always be looking around the corner to see what everybody else is doing. Play your own game. Do what you think is right to to kind of move through that process. And then there's tools that and t- you know techniques that you can use to measure um and to see that you are you're Clients are experiencing what you expect them to experience, but I think that the hard part is just you know um, don't always be I want to be them I want to be them uh, <laughs> you, be you the, <laughs> the the mega the mega banks are playing a game that a community bank can't win right like it's a different game and you shouldn't play that game if you if you try to hop on the board on the game board with them it's not going to be good for you. <laughs> They've well, got way more money, way more technology. But if you can play a different game, I think you're saying, you know, if you're if you're using your customer experience, using your nimbleness in the right way, you can you can compete with them in a way that they they you, know, they, you can play a different kind of game that they can't play. Exactly. I, I mean, I, I'm even going to give you an example. I won't name the bank, but um, there is a really big, almost super regional bank that we come up against, and I'm not going to tell you the state because I'll probably give it away. So I'm just going to say, but they have a different um, level of service, whether or not you're in a growth market or if you're not in a growth market. And if you're not in a growth market, they are not putting the time and attention into building that experience, but they are in, in the growth market. And I think as community banks, we this is our market. <laughs> we don't have that luxury, right? This is who we are, and this is the place that we play. And so we have to think about that level of service or a level of experience a whole lot differently than a mega bank who has locations throughout, you know, you yeah. know, the whole East Coast. Yeah, Joanne, Dan, and I talk often on this show about utilizing your superpower. And, and taking that and raising that up, and that is who you are, and not just to be proud of it, but even from a marketing perspective, you know, is to not try to be all things to all people. And Dan, as you say, not try to directly compete with a Capital One or a whatever. Don't don't try to play that game. Don't go swim in the ocean. Find your pool and do it extremely well, Joanne. And I I think that's what I hear you you saying as well. We, we had a a a, a what was a great client, but who is no longer with us, who in our monthly uh, strategy meetings and check-in meetings with them around their marketing, we were providing web and social and digital ads and all these different services for them. And we would have our agenda that would have your reporting. And then we wanted to talk strategy about where we're going and all of that. And month after month after month, every time we would get on the call, they would show up with a list of things they saw other banks doing that they wanted to do. And it and it resulted, guys, in just this endless, I want to be and I want to do and I want to, we, we, no matter how hard we tried, we could not keep them focused on the, st- the marketing strategic direction that we were trying to take them. And not only was it very frustrating for us, it was very frustrating for them. And they were going, well, you guys aren't doing what we want you to do. And we're going, I, because every time you show up, you got a different kind of different flavor bubble gum. And I saw this and I saw this ad. We want to do this. And, all. you know, we can't even get you to focus on a product set. 
you know, much less a marketing sector or any of that. So anyway, Joanne, just kind of echoing your your point that it is, it, it's it's so important to do and then to raise up that customer experience around that, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a lot of ways to build brand and um, being distracted by the shiny object will never get you there. Yeah. There's a discipline to marketing that I think sometimes those of us who aren't in marketing tend to um, not see. And, you know, we know that if we're going to do it well, we need to we need to focus and, and be really attentive to, you know, how we talk to the client, how we interact with the client, where we're interacting with the client. Um, and, and that mindset, I think, will actually helps smaller banks really be competitive in their market. Yeah, I, I, I mean, really using that superpower as as your strength, and as you know, you, you don't have to have the the tech and the and the ad budgets of of the big your bigger competitors, but but people don't people generally probably aren't you know they they want to maybe maybe do a mobile check upload or do the the basic stuff, but most community banks have that stuff already. So it's it's a matter mm -hmm. of like how do we get that brand to promise out that you know we can we have all this stuff but you know there's this layer of um experience and you know connectivity that in in the experience that we can that we can provide over the you know over the big banks who are you know operating elsewhere and not focused on the community and you know, the same reason I, I think of it the same reason as you know i might choose to um I, mean, I spend enough money on amazon myself but like <laughs> sometimes you might choose to go to the the local, you know, store support a local store. I think there, there's that there's that mindset in a lot of communities that you know. Uh, I think a lot of banks could do a better job talking about that. Of the money stays here, and we yeah. help you know loan out to the small businesses that you that you want to frequent. We're part of that, you know, part of that life cycle. And if you can, you know, I, I think consumers need to see that, but also just know, have that brand promise of yes, but we we can do all this stuff. You know, you don't need the mega bank to be able to do all this stuff. We can do all that stuff and support community yeah the the reality of it is both most community banks in today's world have all the technology that only the most sophisticated business corporation probably can't be served you know everybody else can be served um and and dan you make a good point about uh, like you know brand promise right one of the things that you never want to do is say that you're something and then have someone walk in or experience your brand, and all of a sudden it's like that's not what they promised me. Yeah, you know, um, I mean, that's a kiss of death, right? It, because yeah, I, we, we when we first started, when I first started my company, we we had a bank account at a reasonably large community. It's still a community bank, reasonably large one, and it was, we got like a completely free checking account. And I we got it and got the app. I got the mobile app. I went to using that mobile check deposit example. I'll put a check and then a, you know, a week or two later, I'm checking our bank statements and there's like a 50, per, 50 cent charge on that mobile check upload. Never notified about it. You know, it was probably hidden in the fine print somewhere that nobody ever reads. And I'm just like, you know, it's 50 cents. It's not the end of the world, but it sure is annoying. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, um, I talked to them. And I said, well, you can either do 50 cents a check or, you know, 6.95 a month for up to 20 checks or so. And it was just like, and this is like, you know, 2018 or whatever it was. It's like, we should be past this, you know? And it was just, it's, it's, it's those little friction points that, yeah, they had the technology, but that brand promise didn't sort of stand up to the, you know, to the experience. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Joanne, uh, while you're on that, we, we like to try to kind of give some nuggets and takeaways for our listeners too. And I know one of the things... Uh, that has come from you a good bit is about connecting with your the voice of your customers and and specifically what that uh, what that is and what that looks like and some examples of that. So can you can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. So you know, just depending on the tools that you have, right? I mean, it could be as simple as um, filling out like a little form in the branch, like you know, did we serve? You know, did did do we meet your expectations today? Right, but. The other thing is, you know, MPS score is probably, you know, prevalent amongst all of us. And, you know, do we do that on a regular basis? But if you're measuring MPS, also 
encourage comments to like, don't let that just be the number. Because I don't think that just that number means anything. I think that you have to kind of dig a little bit deeper and you have to say, okay, you know, would you recommend us? And also, what could we have done better today? Or how could we have made your experience better? Because that's where the nuggets come, right? That's where if you are if you are constantly kind of pulling your your clients, you're gonna hear, I can't believe you charged me fifty cents to deposit my own check. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I could have walked into the bank and have it for free. You know, those kind of things are gonna come out, and then you have a laundry list of the things that really rub your clients the wrong way, and you can work on those because that's that's first party data, right? That's the best you can be, right? And what you'll find is it's not only about their experience in the branches or their experience on the phone. You'll hear the ATM down the street has been out for the last three days. Why isn't that fixed? I use that all the time, right? And then, you know, there might be operational and IT things that come out of that as well, because that's the experience. You know, or, you know, the really good example is when if you have a merchant services provider who you kind of refer merchant services to. And the, you know, you, you aren't selling the product and you're not servicing the product, but the client doesn't know that, right? They're going to the bank. It is you. They want you to fix whatever's wrong. They don't really want that other place because they don't know the other place. You, you presented the opportunity. They talked to someone, but really I'm getting my merchant services through this bank. Why, why am I having to go to this person to talk to? So it's it's all of those things, you know, testing and making sure that you kind of understand which where your clients are. You could easily do that through the after account opening surveys, after loan closing surveys. Um, you could email, basically, you know, take a chunk of all of the transactions you had in the last couple of days and send an email out to them. And, you know, you'll get some responses. You might not get a ton, but you'll get some. And that's where you could start. Um, Certainly mystery shopping is a great way, kind of an in-branch um, call center kind of um, way to measure what's going on to make sure that your bankers are giving the experience that you expect them to give. Um, and you'll you'll find holes in, in the process there. Um, and then, you know, just keeping the lines of communications open. I mean, there's some more sophisticated ways you know, uh, Google reviews, right? If you if you have a good digital infrastructure where you can, you know, solicit for Google reviews or even answer those Google reviews, because if you get a one and then they kind of rip you um, on something, you need to be able to answer that, and you need to make sure that you are listening, not only listening, but you're 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 feeding back the problem and making sure that it's fixed. So those are just like a couple quick things that you can do um, to, to listen to the voice of the customer. And that bringing, bringing in reviews is really interesting too. I know I, I like to say, I like to say you're going to get a one-star review, right? Like what's important is not avoiding the one-star review. What's important is managing it. Exactly. T- using it as a feedback loop, bringing that back in, fixing the problem, posting it on, under the review saying, we've fixed this problem. <laughs> Or thanks, you know, thanks. Let's set up a call. You know, let's let's set up a call to talk more about it, and then posting later, we fixed this. That's what's you know, that's what's important. Um, I used to in in our in our pitches used to have this slide that shows like a snapshot of the Grand Canyon's Google listing, and it's got one star reviews. The, you know, the walk was too <laughs> far from the parking lot. Like it's the Grand Canyon, but you're gonna get you're gonna get one star reviews. Man, figure out how to manage it. Figure out how to use it to improve. You know, improve your experience. <laughs> I haven't exactly. used that one, man. I'm I'm gonna have to borrow that one. <laughs> go, it's no, it's a real thing. Go, you know, go go uh, search for it. <laughs> yeah. It's a great example. Um, but I mean, that that brings us, I think, to the topic of like technology, right? Like, and and you mentioned you know merchant services, and I think that's true for a lot of community banks. That like most community banks don't make their own mobile app. You know, most of them um, don't make their own online banking system. But they're they're also using. Um, you know, using vendor technology that might be highly customized, mm-hmm. you know, and to the customer, it, it doesn't feel like, you know, vendor technology, but it's, that's part of the experience too. So how do you think about, you know, we're talking about making things frictionless and and giving the customer everything that they need, but like, how do you think about technology, like technology's role in 
creating, you know, creating or bettering customer experience. Yeah, that's a catch-22 in a lot of ways, right? <clears throat> because you're you're beholden to what you have, right? And you can only work so much um, within the systems that you have. And you're hoping that they are a good and responsive vendor to be able to, to listen to you and say, you know, this, this is not working. So with technology, you know, I always say the technology is not the experience. There's probably something you can do to create an easier experience with the technology that you have. I think most of the cores in the online banking systems are sophisticated enough so that you can eliminate as much friction from that journey as possible. It might not be the Capital One app, you know, where like everything is just simple, simple, simple. But at the end of the day, you can make it easy for your client. And uh, uh, just telling you an interesting story, um, we have um, just hired a new marketer and um, she's she's younger and she was setting up her account and we wanted her to go th- because she's going to be in charge of digital and uh, digital marketing. And she went through the process and she's like, oh my God, this is hard and this is hard and this is hard and this is hard. It's like, this is perfect. <laughs> she's like, I'm sorry. I'm like, don't be sorry. You're like, this is great. You know, this is great feedback. Because you didn't know what to expect, but your expectations were that it would have been easy to do. And then that helped us realign some of the things that, you know, and put it on the dashboard of, you know, we need to make this stuff easier because that's the expectation of our client. And having new employees do that for you is a a great feedback loop as well, in case you can't do any of that NPS stuff. Yeah, that's great. Actually, actually going out and talking to me. talking to people or it's been your it's been your app your online banking experience for years like everybody in the bank probably at some level takes it for granted and you're not looking at it with the new eyes so you know new employees or exactly. um you know if you can make your make your customer surveying part of reaching back out to customers and saying hey would you would you hop on for 15 minutes and show us you know show us what you're frustrated with or take us through show us how you're how you're using you know this particular tool and you know, you'll, you'll get you'll get different ideas and different um, different perspective for sure. Yeah, um, our, our product um, manager um, actually tries to encourage that. We don't get a lot of responses, but you know, it's, it, it's open, you know, let's, let's talk and, you know, like let's set up a little like focus group. It might be a good idea yeah. to just run it through, right. And beta it. Yeah. Yeah. So I know we were, when we, when we were prepping for this, you were, you know, we we're talking about all this stuff, and you told me about, um, you know, uh, how, uh, we were talking a little bit. How do you, you know, how do you actually implement these things at the bank, or how do you start to kind of create those those feedback loops? And you're telling me about the the care process. Can you yeah. expand on that? Let's tell us a little bit more about about that. So, so Fidelity Bank has this uh, brand promise called Life Design brand promise. Basically, you know, we're there to help you and give you the answers help you make decisions with confidence. And part of that process is the the care, um, a care conversation. And care really stands for collect, analyze, recommend, and execute. So we're encouraging our, our banking staff, our banking sales staff to really understand the problem and give thoughtful recommendations on what the product is and then help the client make that decision. And so that in itself creates a wonderful client experience. And we actually, interestingly, you know, our MPS score is really good. But when we ask them, have they experienced a life design care process, it goes up like by 20 points. So it's it's interesting that when a client feels that, how the MPS score actually changes. And the other thing with the with that is, you know, that is the that is the um, face to face conversation. So one of the things that we need to do is find a way to di- digitize that and make sure that it's it's evident in all channels at all delivery points. That you know, you can't really do it in an ATM, but but certainly you can do it over the phone. You can do it through your digital applications, and figuring out the way to make sure that. You get that high MPS score no matter what channel they're going through. 
That's great. And, and you know, I, I, it brings up the point too that even just little things can make a huge difference in, in NPS or in, into the NPS feeling and the feelings that go into like uh, a customer wanting to recommend you. Um, even right. just a, you know, even just a call here and there. Right. But at, at a, at a, at a bank with thousands of customers, you know, you need a process in place to make sure that over time, every customer gets that call or gets the, the care kind of experience when they, when they come to ask questions. Right. It, it, it changes somebody coming in and asking a teller like, Hey, do you have loans to let us set up a one on one consultation and, and talk about your, talk about your life and talk about what you really need. And so we're not just like, Throwing a bunch, you know, throwing a brochure with forty different loan options at you. We're we're talking you through it and you know figuring out what you need. Exactly, and you know, even even um, setting up an onboarding cadence when you open new accounts, making sure that you're reaching out. You know, that's a simple thing as well. I mean, a little harder to execute on. You know, to to scale that when you don't have it already in place, but just you know. A, a six week, six month cadence of onboarding calls, letters, emails, you know, making sure that that the new client is feeling good about the decision they made. Um, we, you know, I I back tested onboarding during my years in banking, and it's amazing the difference um, onboarding makes to a to making the client feel like they've made the right decision. Um, and the client experience in general. And and that's when they're, the, it should be the highest level of engagement and they should exactly. be the most excited about working with you. Hey, I just switched to this new bank or, or I just got a new loan or whatever. And boy, if you can't lead them through a good customer experience at that point, yeah, <laughs> what's it going to be like, you know, down the road? I mean, exactly. driving the car off the lot you should be freaking excited. <laughs> you know, and if you look down and the oil change light is on and it's not a gas and you're not even off the car light yet, then you're, I mean, you're like, I, you know, so I don't know where I came up with that analogy, but as I was listening to you, Joanne, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're new and, and newly experiencing customer should get those, those vibes and those touch points and that cadence and, and I love what you said there too, is making sure that that's scalable. I mean, that's one thing if you've got, uh, you know, one loan officer that, that delivers that kind of experience, it's a whole other thing to be across, you know, your, your entire bank, right? Exactly. Make sure that that's the way that we do things. It's not just that Susie does that really well, but Bobby over here doesn't do it well. It's It's got to be that is your customer experience as a brand, right? Exactly. Yeah, and I am a firm believer in um, you don't leave that stuff to chance. Everything you do has to be engineered because in that engineering, you can train it, you can you can um, report on it, you can do all kinds of things. But if it's not engineered and it's not trained properly, you're never going to get the scale. Absolutely. Man. This has been so great, Joanne. I know that uh, this is a conversation the three of us could go on with <laughs> on and on and on as well, because uh, this is, is kind of where, to me, this is where a lot of that marketing really gets uh, marched out. And this is where the brand becomes something way more than a logo in a building and a collateral piece. This is where it is, using your, your terminology, it's an experience. So... Um, so this this has been super and very insightful. So really appreciate your your thoughts and experience around all of this. No, I appreciate it. I mean, I think I'm, I we could probably go on for three more hours. Oh, yeah. right? <laughs> Absolutely. Future future episode uh, opportunities here. <laughs> there you go. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing we do like to do with with guests also is ask you to stick around for a minute with a uh, with a few lightning round questions. So are you uh, you good with that? Yeah, I guess so. Yep, absolutely. I don't think Dan will bite you too much on these. <laughs> that might. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll ask again at the end if you're if you're still good with it. But <laughs> we're pretty harmless. Well, um, you know, I, can you share first one? Can you share with us a uh, personal best, business best, like some some good stuff that's happened to you? Um, well, I think um, a personal best is uh, 
Uh, I've had a little journey. It took me 20 years to finish my MBA, and I finally finished it in uh, just a few months ago. So, um, you know, life got in the way, <laughs> kids and everything else, and and uh, so I was I was I was really proud about that. Um, and as a business best, I was thinking, you know, um, that one of the things I'm really proud of is that um, the team I left back at the Green <laughs> um, was really, really um, prepared to move forward without me. And I, you know, you know, they check in periodically with me and make sure that, you know, we talk and, you know, they'll send me a text and I'll send them back, but they're, they're doing wonderfully and I'm so proud of them. That's great. You're creating, creating great fidelity banks uh, across the country. (laughs) 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 All right. Well, what's a uh, favorite book or other resource? Oh my gosh. This is like the longest, you know, I am a reader and I, I, have so many favorite books, but I'll give you one like personal and one business and, but I can go on for five hours with books. So my all time favorite just book in general is Les Miserables, Victor Hugo. Um, And it's such a wonderful story. If no one's ever read it, Maybe buy the abridged version first. <laughs> um, but Not it's the two thousand page, yeah. <laughs> right. But it's just such a wonderful, wonderful story. Um, and then my um, my current um, recommendation to a lot of people is Adam Grant's Give and Take, mm-hmm. which is, um, I think, a really good way of looking at the world and and finding your way through it. And and I'm a big fan of Adam Grant um, in general. Um, so, um, I read his, you know, his, his LinkedIn posts and his podcasts and all, all that other stuff. So, so that's, that's my kind of businessy version. <laughs> Great recommendation. Yeah. Uh, what is the most impactful piece of advice you've ever received? Oh, um, I think it's my, my, my mother would always say, um, you make your own luck. And I think that that's true. So I think that that really, you know, is 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 the way I kind of look at the world. It's my job to make make myself successful. It's my job to to move forward on things, you know. And and if you hustle and you do the things and you you're 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 learning all the time, those opportunities will come. Yeah. Okay, so. Flipping that around a little bit, what's something you always tell your staff or your customers? Um, so my staff, <laughs> I have the world according to Joanne isms. <laughs> so it's a lot of things like, but um, big things. It, don't be afraid to break things and rebuild them. I think we in banking have a tendency to put process onto process and not realize what the bottom process was actually used for. So you know, break it to build it. Um, I think is a big thing, especially in this whole client experience prospect. Like, really, why are we doing that? Why are we making them do that? Is that really beneficial? Does that add any value at all? Um, and I think the the other thing would be, um, don't be afraid to launch things at 80%. You know, we'll never get to 100. And we can, we can make adjustments. Um, you know, the analogy I always use is, you know, don't be trying to get all the dust in the dustpan, you know, mop the floor and somebody will come after you and make sure we get the pieces that you missed. But like, if you, if you try to get every speck of dust in that dustpan, you will never, ever launch anything. It, 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 it'll go too slow and then you'll never succeed and you'll never be relevant in the world that's moving faster and faster. So mm-hmm. those are two. Right. Right. Somebody's going to come right back through and track more dust into the room anyway. So just <laughs> That's right. manage it and keep moving forward. <laughs> well, uh, last last question, and we saved the softball one for the end. But um, you know how how can how can people get in touch with you? Um, if they got more questions or want to kind of nerd out a little bit more on the topic. Yeah. Uh, well, um, my LinkedIn profile. I mean, connect and say say you know you you heard me and you want to. I have questions. I love to connect with bank marketers. I think that's why I've taught at bank marketing school for so long because it is a it's a great experience to to um, to hear what other people have to say to to kind of brainstorm together. 
Um, I always like those opportunities. So I always look forward to connecting. Great. Well, we'll uh, we'll link that up in the show notes and along with the books and check out the the on the website bankmarketingshow.com. You can find all the links to that stuff. Um, and yeah, this, this has been a this has been a great conversation. Really enjoyed getting you know getting into it. I've definitely got got some you know got some new perspectives on how to think about you know the the marriage of marketing and customer experience. Uh, so thank you so much for your time here and um, yeah, thank you. Hope you enjoyed it as well. So yeah, I had a great time. Thank you. <laughs> Good. It was wonderful, Joanne. Thanks so much for spending the time with us. Great. I appreciate it. Got it. Thanks for joining us. To go deeper or get access to some of the valuable nuggets from today's show, go to bankmarketingshow.com. There you'll find episodes, links to resources, and much more. Be sure to subscribe wherever you find your podcasts. And join us next time. <laughs>